Don't touch that dial. It's now time for Dexter Davidson. If there's anything you need at all, young lady, I can have one of my staff get it for you. Uh, thank you. I'm fine for now. Oh, well, we'll just put a hold on those drinks for right now. Uh, excuse me, who are you? Well, sir, I'm Rockford. Rockford? Where's Alfred? Called in six, sir. Uh, very well then, you are dismissed. Aye, man. Give it to me straight. Is she... How they... Playing the boogaloo? Are they holding hands? I just want to know. I mean, just just give it to me straight. Tell me up front, bro. Don't spare any expense. Are they doing the Philly strut? Are they doing the boogaloo? Tell me. Man, ain't nobody locking no lips if that's what you're trying to say. See, see, now why you gotta go there? See? Now you go go putting images in a brother head. I don't want those kind of images in my head. I don't want nobody locking no lips up in my head. Not in this head. This head right here with this old crazy wig on it. I am not feeling this right now. I'm not feeling the, the, the pain. I'm not feeling the humility. I'm not feeling the hum whatever. I'm not feeling it. All right, so basically I need you to get back over to the door. Take a look, peek, see what's going on. I want the blow by blow. I want to know what's happening from time to minute to minute. We're going to have to interrupt this and get these people out of here some kind of way. She is not spending the evening at this cabinet, cabin, knit, cabin, whatever. She's not spending the time here. No. No. We're going to get them out of here. That's why we're here. Well, well hold on, man. Let me get this again real quick. Alright, so what we got here is, we're talking about, we're talking about, what? They come to the cabin. He thinks something's going to happen, but I, I don't think it's going to happen. I think the guy's going to be a perfect gentleman about it. So, you being the party of the first part is worrying about the party of the second part, which is him, be getting involved with the party of the third part, which is her. Gotcha. Let me go see what's happening. Oh, well there goes my buzzer. Well, Tom, what if what if what if I have to go in there? You know my girl's probably gonna recognize me. Hey, the best way to do that, man, always works for me. Change your walk a little bit and just change to some kind of foreign accent. Then women never catch on. Uh, dude, you're up next. They want you to walk the dog. Something about they want the guy with the higher intelligence to walk the dog. I don't know how you can tell that by looking at me. But. N no, no, don't dude. look at me like that, man. I, I ain't walking man, no dude, dog. I didn't. I had nothing to do with it. No the dog, man, man told me that it looked like no, you had I'm the not, most I'm intelligence. I'm not walking the dog. So. 
right? I'm about like that. I'm not walking like that. I'm not walking the dog. Man, I'm scared of dogs, man. I'm not walking the dog. Do I look like a dog walker to you? I'm not walking the dog. Like you're up. I can't do it, man. I can't do it. Man, don't worry about it. All you gotta do is serve drinks. If you want drinks right now, go out there, change your accent, change the way you look. just change your walk, something. She won't recognize you, man. She won't recognize you. And then just when the coast is clear, spill a little something on her dress, then that way she has to go home. All right, man. I'll give it a try. I want my girl back. Good luck, man. I wonder what's taking him so long with those drinks. And who might you be, young man? I am Pierre, sir. The greatest waiter on the land. I've never seen you before. I am a friend of a friend of a friend of an uncle of a friend that was a relative of yours at one time, a first cousin. And I happen to be the Duke of Earl of the King of George. PR at your service. Hmm. I have to speak to Alfred on this. Anyway, do you have our drinks? Yes, sir. Your drinks. One vodka and orange juice for you. And for the young lady, a peanut colada. Oops! Ah, uh, you ruined my dress. Pierre, you're fired. <laughs> I've never. And you never will. My dress is ruined. I better go. My job is done here. Kitties, yeah, this is Cat Major again. Of course, you know I gotta talk about my buddy. I always like to hang out with me. Yeah, like I said before, this is a true story. This is the time where things didn't quite end up the way they should have ended up. Alright, 
course you had me, old bosom mate, cat mate, I'm right there running the main deck. And there's you know storm blowing, and we were supposed to go into a port somewhere off Michigan, but Sanya somewhere in there. It was it was it was in Michigan, but it was across from Sanya. Yeah, it was real cold and windy that night. Now what happened was. We pull up to the shore, at least we thought we were in Port Huron, but we really weren't in Port Huron. I don't know where we were. Things would look different that day. Well, we request a little shore leave. Nothing like shore leave. But, you know, you've been out to sea, you're wrestling with the ropes. And you just want to just chill out. You really don't want a whole bunch of stress that day. You don't want no stress. So you got me, old bosun mate, cat mate, and you got the brother here. Then I had my friend, Richard. What people call him Dick. Anyway, so we hail a cab, and the cabby comes around, and you know, they come to the cabby, we get the cabby together, and we decide we're going to go into town. So, you know, you got to divvy up. Yeah, yeah. So we divvy up for the cabby, and we ride around town, and Still look gloomy out, kind of misty and too bad. But we're sitting there, we're looking along the road there, and we're looking for a club to go to, and we to find this club. So I, I'm like, well, the club looks pretty decent, man. Let's go on in. And brother here's like, yeah, well, that's cool. But then, Brother Richard's like, well, I don't know, man, I don't know. So, make a long story short, while we're sitting there debating these three, Young ladies come out. Yeah, so Richard, like, hey man, let's go. Well, I'm like, hey, but well, that's cool too. You know, I'm on board and the head's on board, so they all decided, well, where are we gonna go? Where are you ladies headed? Like I said before, some of these stories are kind of hard to believe. But I mean to tell you, every story I tell you is a true one. And what happened was, uh, we get to, they had some kind of apartment or house they were staying in. So we said, well, hey, we're going to hang with them, we'll get some drink or whatnot. So we go out, we hang out, we get, we, we stop by the liquor store, get some drinks. So it was in there and trying to figure out well, what we're going to do. They had records. What? You know, back in the day, you know, we did records. We did MP3, CD. Didn't have that back then. So basically, what I'm saying is, you know, they had, we had an album, you know, back when I was coming up. You know, we had albums that, you know, we do. And what I would do is, I'd pick a, pick a young lady up. I'd go ahead and put them four albums on there. I put four albums on there. And after them four albums, we still still and how to do in this time for you to go. But that's my own secret code. You know, you're going to hear a bunch of secret code right now sometime anyway. So, like, like I was saying, so, this is what happened. So, we, we, we decided we're going to go over here. We started to lick a big lick up and go down to. Yeah, it was like a house. It was, it was like a house. The end of a road, it was kind of dark. So I'm trying to figure out why, why it's so dark down the road. Now, you know, I don't believe in ghosts and whatnot. It, it was windy out that night. Yeah. A little misty, like I said. It was just, it was a real bad day. Raining, kind of like it is right now. So anyway, we, we pull up in the cab, you know, he, he real happy. We rode around him. Right, most of the night we rode around with him. Yeah. Hey man, can you? You're not drinking. Thank you. Thank you. I, you know, I got your thing together here. Yeah, if I don't have my drink on, and cig, you know. See the cigarettes, you know. Hey man, these things are terrible. Man. Just don't, don't start smoking. That's all I got to say. Don't. You, do you smoke? Don't start. That what the commercial said. You know. So anyway, we get to this house. It's way at the end of this road, and it's windy and just kind of misty out. It's just kind of real nasty, you know. But 
about 11, 11 30, we pull up to this big old huge house. And we go up to the porch and we go inside. But next thing you know, so I'm sitting there, you know, I'm sitting there, and we decide we're going to put some record on. So I'm putting record on with a young, young lady, and there's my buddy Ed, he gone on there, another young lady, and, and, and my man Richard, Richard's over there on the couch. I'm like, well, yeah, everything's cool, you know. Next thing I look over there, I see my man Richard over there. He ain't responding. I'm like, something wrong with Richard. Richard ain't responding. So my date, she tell me, well, they're really not dates. We just met them. But my date telling me, don't worry about Richard. Richard be fine. But I'm like, no, Richard, you know, let me explain about, about my buddy Richard. And I tell her, you know, I'm a buddy Richard. You know, some people call him dick. But anyway. My buddy Richie, he always has a hard head, you know. He, he gonna do what he gonna do. He gonna have his own mind. You know, I try to tell Richie what he do. Richie be like, no, nah, man, I'm going this way with it. And that's the way it is. He's just Bulgarian. I don't understand why. He ain't bigger than me. He big. He big for his side now. He big for his side. But he ain't bigger than me. So, you know, I be doing what Richie behind him, but we ain't going there today. So basically, so I look over there, I say, no, baby, no, baby, hold up, baby. Something wrong, Brother Rich. But Rich ain't responding. I mean, it look like he, he, he's not breathing or something. So I goes over there, and I see Rich, Rich really looking bad there. Really looking, looking bad. And I'm like, Rich, what's up, man? You ain't responding, man. He ain't talking to me. Yeah, Rich is just laying there, man. He's just limping, just laying there. I'm like, Rich, I hope he ain't checking out on me. So pretty much what happened was then at that particular time he comes seeming Ed out of there and he's like, Man, let's go. I'm like, man, what do you mean let's go? And we put records on but you know, Rich ain't acting right. I don't know what's up with him, but make a long story short, we, we got Rich out of there. We couldn't leave him like that. Never leave your buddy behind. Rich is a man of his word. He's a mega man. He's a, a mega man. Mega man. Yes, when it comes to integrity. So, the moral of that story is: if Richard gets sick, if Richard ain't acting right, the best thing to do is is to go home, pack it up, and go home. And that's the way I'm gonna tell that story. And like I said, it is a true story. diary. I don't even know why I made this trip. I come all the way down here knowing I'm going to get disappointed. And I get disappointed. I don't know why, but I think I'm going to work it out. I'm going to be strong with this one. Maybe I'll start another career. 
get back into my office days again. Helping other people solve their problems may help me solve some of mine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. And it's really empty out here. And the snow is still coming. I hope I don't get stuck. It's the last thing I want to do is get stuck. Last time I got stuck in the snow, it wasn't very pleasant. It was cold and miserable and... Mr. Davidson wasn't there. I don't know what I'm saying. Lonely dark road and little white snowflakes. Lonely dark road. That sounds like a poem. I wonder if everybody else talks to themselves on the road like I do. I don't know. Lone dark road and little white snowflakes. Sounds like a perfect idea for a poem. I see a truck up here. It looks like a few people are coming around. Yeah, I'm not the only person awake. Well, no matter what I say, I'm still sitting here wondering what Mr. Davidson is doing right now. I just wonder. I mean, a lot of times I think happy thoughts, but... Sometimes those thoughts get me a little excited. It's not good to be excited on the road, especially late at night. I mean, it could draw your attention away from the road. You could just be driving along and all of a sudden you're feeling sleepy and and your your eyes are trying to stay awake, but your body's like, you got to lay down and you're trying not to really get sleepy. And next thing you know, you, you're seeing double or you're missing gaps in time. I don't know why that happens. But I hate it when it happens to me. So, I guess I feel a little better talking about it. Maybe it woke me up. Yes, yes, I'm awake. I'm not asleep. I have not been drinking. I feel good. And I'm wide awake, and I see little white snowflakes coming at the windshield. Little white snowflakes coming at the windshield. Little, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Maybe I need to pull over. But I just want to get home now. Being disappointed about the whereabouts of Mr. Davidson has not put me in a very good mood. But that's okay. I'm going to work that out. Yes, I am. I'm going to work that out. I'm just going to talk to the president and open up my little office and then I'll be fine. And I'll let Mr. Davidson call me when he feels ready because he hasn't called. Uh, who's was that blowing at me? Oh, dog. Why don't you just go around? Look, I reserve the right to drive in any lane I want. If you want, carry your sorry ass around. Excuse me, y'all. I don't usually talk that way. Most times I'm usually relaxed on the road, but every now and then, there's that one, you know? That one. The one that just gets on your last... Yeah, go around. I said it. <laughs> Gentlemen, you may leave now. These are not the droids you're looking for. Yes, sir, Mr. President. We will leave you now. Wow, man, how'd you learn that? Uh, I don't know, man. Watching some movie down there on Earth, Star Wars or something you guys had down there. Anyway, I just came here and 
these guys are say, take me to your leader. They're like, well, we don't have one. I'm like, well, you have one now. So I'm president of the far side of the moon. Hey, man, grab your gear, grab your ship, follow me in. I'll take you to McCrea, man. We'll pick up from there. Well, thanks, President Blurb. This here is First Officer White. Yeah, he's my co-pilot. Pleased to meet you, sir. Yeah, the pleasure is mine. God's in my footsteps. One, two, three, four. Start the tape, start the tape, start the tape now. Start the tape, start the tape. Hey, I stumbled. I stumbled off a wall, yes I did When I know I should be standing tall My mama always told me to watch my step Watch my step. Hmm. God saw me as I started to fall. Yes, He did. I say He caught me and saw me, saw me through it all. Whoa, whoa. God opened. Up my way, yeah. He walks with me from day to day, from day to day. God's in my footsteps every day. With his guidance. Hey, I know the way, I know the way, yeah, yeah. 